All right, welcome back uh, to another Sans Internet Storm Center forensic quiz slash contest slash challenge. Uh, this one for April 2021. And since I am doing all this well past the expiration date for answers, um, no, no fuss, no mas. Uh, so, much like with the other ones, it looks like I guess they must have changed at some particular point the submissions. Uh, I guess apparently the domain for the AD environment changed to clockwater.net. I don't know what it was previously. Um, but effectively, it follows much the same that we've seen for October's, June's, May's. Um, challenge that is okay we give you um, generally a PCAP and from there you figure out okay which what's the IP address of the infected Windows computer the host name user account on the infected machine time and date the infection occurred uh, and then basically the family of the malware that's uh, been deployed so in this particular case we are given a PCAP Uh, then a second password protected zip file that looks like it contains artifacts that were extracted. Um, description of the environment, so user account is formatted first name dot last name, which I think is what we've seen through the pre three previous challenges. Um, so it looks like this is clockwater.net. Looks like domain controller is at 192.168.5.5. And we're on another 192.168.5.0 slash 24. So dot one being the segment gateway and 255 being the broadcast address. Um, as per the normal thing, uh, especially seeing as how it is uh, not just a PCAP. If you go through and do this, I mirror the same exact concerns as are denoted here. I'm going through and doing the analysis on a non-Windows based device, but because I am a outright hypocrite, or I'm just going to consider that I know what the hell I'm doing, I'm doing this on a Windows box. <laughs> I guess if I end up infecting my box, I'll have to sit there and go through and I guess I could make a video on disinfecting my box. but. So anyways, um, there is included a list. I will bring that up in front of everything else now that we are this far through. And so it basically drives out to some XSG file, a DO1 file. I'm not familiar with either of those two, but I am familiar with the binary form of the Excel document. Looks like they were able to sit there and pull down scheduled task. Another binary Excel file, a DLL file, and some executables. So now comes the fun part. Go through and dump these items into virus total and the like so this is going to take a little bit of time so I'm going to just basically take these I'm going to dump them through um, I am also going to sit there besides VT I'm just going to dump them into integer analyze and then I will be right back as I expect that this is probably going to take a little bit of time for all this stuff to process through so rather than sit there and just record constantly submitting the stuff and potentially fighting with any endpoint AV or anything else like that I might have to deal with. Um, and then we'll basically just I'll show the results from VT and analyze 
for all these particular files so we'll have some sort of idea as to what kind of garbage is rolling on these boxes. So I will be, well, well I'll be back shortly for anybody that's watching this. For me, who knows how long this is going to be. Hopefully just a few minutes. Okay, that was a little bit longer than what I was hoping for. Um, interestingly enough, in the artifacts zip, once everything was decompressed, um, the list that was given for artifacts received is actually short one, which I thought was rather interesting. Um, what was not discussed was the program data huqvg slash uh, basically then just the huqvg.exe oops it's not showing up apologies let me bring it all the way down so this item here was not listed in the original set of artifacts but was included inside of the zip file so we're going to basically just break this sucker down moving forward. So let me go ahead and get rid of this. And here comes the fun part. So from that list, there were two files that were effectively duplicates. The items from C users public, the 4123.xsg was the same exact file. Wait, I think I've got that wrong. Ah, crap. One of the files were exactly the same. Give me one second so I can, I'm not basically just talking out my butt. All right, so PowerShell, open that up. I mean, the only beautiful thing was the fact that it was all inside that public folder. Two of the files were exactly the same. Okay, yeah. So I, I think the information here is a little bit off. All right, so that's, that's what's thrown me for the loop, is the, the file size. So yes, the XSG and the XLSB were the same exact file. And so that looks like, I mean, we got G data saying trick bot. We got whatever this particular AV is that it's Emotet, trick bot from Microsoft, FireEye, trick bot, eScan, Bitdefender. So I'm gonna assume that this box is infected with trick bot. And of course, yeah, so it's not executable, but it is basically de denoting that it is known malware or known malicious from Analyze. Uh, moving forward, then takes us to the dot zero or D O one file, which I think is actually just a DLL file that's been renamed. Uh, multiple detections there for Emotet and Trickbot. Of course, the interesting thing is, is that Analyze denotes that it matches with dang near, well, full 58% of Bizarre Loader. But it's obviously malicious. Well, it looks like they're, they've arrived to sit there and do uh, yard work. Uh, next item was the file that was uh, in C Windows System 32 Tasks. It is the Sun Space SVC Restart Task Number 32640. Interestingly enough, this is not detected as malicious inside of ET. 
and is marked as trusted inside of analyze so I am fairly certain yes I did grab that so let me grab the other portion and open that up and we will bring that through so you guys can see it so it's just your typical XML file looks like it's supposed to run every two minutes duration 24 hours looks like it's supposed to run for about 10 years give or take if I'm reading that right the end boundary it's enabled uh, the, and of course it again tells us okay who's the user ID that it's using so whichever workstation has William Coughlin but the bigger aspect we're looking for is the exec which just barely shrinks onto the page here so let me shrink this down a little bit so I can bring this down all the way okay so the big thing again we get more William Cog Coglin, but the biggest aspect is that it is calling the anchor underscore x64.exe with the dash u argument attached. It was another file that uh, was included in the captured artifacts section. move on to the next one so another one that was inside of uh, C Windows temp ADF I think that's effectively what we're up to into the very last section here so this is one of the other ones that was inside the same folder with that anchor underscore x64 uh, more indications for trickbot running through this aspect uh, bizarre loader detection with 87 percent uh, inside of analyze we move on to was this straight on anchor yes anchor underscore x64 dot exe let's see this one Well, if you want to believe Microsoft, TrickBot. Semantics says AnchorBot. Analyze says Bizarre Loader, but with an 85% indicator that it is indeed malicious. And then we go on to Anchor as Juicer underscore x64. Uh, another indication for no this is not the one that comes out and basically says trickbot or emotet but basically just breaks through there no idea what the tool does if I've got enough time I might go through and oh good lord sorry notepad was still up crap how long was that up for so let's see there's the okay th that's the XML file so here's the anchor DNS highlighted for trickbot detection from grid and soft the Vera trickbot trend micro again just off the screen trickbot the analyze detection for so basically 87% code reuse for bizarre loader the anchor underscore x64 for denoting anchor bot or trick bot depending as to who you want to believe again another indication for bizarre loader at about 86% uh, the as jester that's in that same Windows temp ADF file as the previous two that I've shown 
course, interesting thing here, probably packed. 34%, almost 35% that's unique. But basically, the sucker is marked as malicious. Uh, then we go into the user's directory for William Wilmer Coughlin. And this would have been downloads and then subscription. So... Uh, malicious macros at best guess. Another indication for Bizarre Loader as the main family for most of this stuff. But another indication of delicious or er, delicious. Malicious. Dear Lord. Uh then I believe this was yes, the DLL file that was what was the path? Is again in that user directory. So C users Wilmer dot Coughlin app data local temp C sixteen dot TMP dot DLL. Now, granted, these are several months apart, which is or from when this stuff was released as to the analysis point now. So I'm not surprised to sit there and see that so many things detect this. And this looks like this is possibly Meterpreter or Cobalt Strike. And when took a look inside of, so generic malware inside of Analyze, or that's 22%. Call it 7% for TrickBot in terms of detection for code use. And of course, then we get to the, the oddity that was not included in the artifacts list. The file that was sitting there and residing in C program data HUQVG and then HUQVG.exe. This looks like a bunch of just so more indicator for bizarre loader. And then basically running through analyze bizarre loader. So I this is the first time I've can say that I've actually seen a um a miss like that for in terms of gathered artifacts, everything else along those lines. Um, so that's basically all the files ripped out of here. So it definitely looks like a trick bot infection. Um, and we're fairly certain we know who the user is, the William Coughlin. So I guess the biggest aspect is now we need to figure out what? The host, a IP address, and the time. So we've got about half the answers just from dissecting the captured artifacts. All right. So I need to bring Network Miner back up on the screen. And transition that sucker in. Okay, and we're looking for 192. So let's go ahead and just take a look. All right, we don't have anything there. We've got 106. We don't have a host. But... William Coughlin. Hello, Mr. Coughlin. So we're going to go ahead and grab that. I mean, granted, I mean, could have cut down a little bit on the suspense aspect, but I would say that we've got what we're looking for. Oh, and I need to cut this stuff out from here.
And it looks like they're coming closer with the air blowers, everything else like that. So if that ends up being picked up in the background, I do apologize. There isn't really a whole heck of a lot I can do about that right now. I'm not about to sit there and tell them that they can't sit there and work. Uh, so let's see. So it looks like the IP address in question is going to be 192.168.5.125. User uh, host name is going to be laptop dash x-ray 9 November Alpha Quebec 2 Echo Uniform. MAC address 14 Bravo 31 Frank 9 Delta 3392. And we already know for a fact that the user is Wilmer.Coughlin. So, I mean, realistically, the only thing we're then is okay, how did he get it? So, we're going to say TrickBot. So we got to figure out the time that this all happened. So realistically, all we have, I mean, because there's no, nope, we don't have anything for 126, and we don't have a username for 137. So by sheer process of elimination, we've got that it's this one here. Anything starting at just straight eight, much less that it resolves to a XYZ domain, just worries the hell out of me. That looks like cloud apps, DNS, Akamai, Akamai Edge. Other workstations, OneDrive. Oh man, that's so small. Can I make this any bigger without screwing it up for how it shows up being captured? Okay, I think it's still fairly good. Okay, so we've got all this stuff here. What uh, what do we need to try to figure out here? So it looks like they hit gtmers.xyz at 8.209.100.246. But it looks like all we got were certs. R1, R1, and then we start getting oh, on a non-standard TCP port, not 80 and not 443, instead 50, 334 to a .in domain. Oh, that's so source port. Whoops. Posted upload. So wait, we got an exe file leaving the laptop in question? Right, because yeah, 192. Okay, so let's do this. We're fairly certain that we know what the box is. So let's go ahead and just apply anything here just to cut down on the amount of crap. All right, so executable that was sent off. Let me run through the list. Looks like it starts in Delta Frank 9. That doesn't look like any of the artifacts that we pulled out for that executable. So, let's see as to whether or not if this is actually known about to see as to whether or not if we can pinpoint this down. Although, I'm not entirely sure as to why an EXE would be going out like that, but...
Interesting. I mean, the name is rt3ret3.exe, but as I'm looking at this here, it looks like it's actually just a JavaScript file. Let me do this. Let me take that out of the way. So I suppose let's do this. I mean, I've got it pulled up, and it it being read out looks like it just says ping. Like I say, I'm very uh, impressed here. They are literally right out in front of uh, where I'm recording. And it does not look like the it's the motors or anything else like that are being picked up. I mean, I'm not going to complain. <laughs> uh, and then we see the same exact stuff, this time from another XYZ. Which looks like that's being pulled down to the actual box in question. And it's got the, um, oh, what is it? The, the magic ID or it basically starts in MZ, which is supposed to be what indicated for an executable file. So let's see. And it looks like that denotes. Of course, I don't think it's going to show up, but so that looks like that corresponds with the download of that huqvg.exe file. The MD5 is exactly the same. So I guess, and these are all running in sequence for frame numbers, right? Yes, by the looks of it. So I guess let's do this. I mean, we, we've focused on the artifact detections. So what if we move out from there and try looking elsewhere? So if we go ahead and take a look. So let's see, I'm trying to do uh, any sort of sandboxing that's been done for that gtmers.xyz. It doesn't look like we have much there. I didn't do something, yeah, I did it in the thing, so domain. Nothing there. So this has got some of the old info. So if we put in gtmers.xyz inside of Alien Vault, what do we get? We get indications for Bizarre Loader. Or bizarre Loader, which we've seen through a bunch of different aspects thus far. Clean that out. Um, URL Hoss, do we see any malware that bothered to kick off from here? Nothing from here, but we might need to go back and take a look elsewhere. So let's go ahead and clean this up. 
IBM, what do you have on this? Nothing. I mean, I'm saying I'm shocked, but that would be a lie. Mandiant, what do you have? M score of 99 as an indicator. First scene, last scene, this is all March. So the month before, at least the ass end of the month. And these, oh good lord, I forgot to do the transition again. My apologies. So the sandboxing, looking for that XYZ domain, alien vault, denoting related tags. So it's seen these things before. One surprise as to whether or not this was just a a first hit, like a a quick check. I mean, that would kind of explain as to why we're seeing that stuff there. And then, of course, there's IBM. Uh, there's URL Hoss, nothing there. And, of course, Mandiant for gtmers.xyz. But not much else outside of that fact. So, back to the old drawing board we go. What's the next one in sequence that we end up seeing? It ends up being another XYZ. In this case, it is... Vezo 2. So, let's go ahead and we will dump Vezo 2 into Alien Vault. Bizarre Loader, Cobalt Strike, so this stuff has been noticed before. And absolutely no help yet again from IBM. Let's go ahead and check if there's been anything in the URL URL host database for Vezo2.xyz. Hello! Uploads, files, RT3, RET3. Which I think is exactly what we ended up seeing from all this stuff. RT3 RET3, yep. So let's go ahead and pull it up inside a URL Hoss. What do we get? So definitely Bizarre Loader, and it looks like... So 291, ending in 64 Bravo. So did we have anything here that... ...matched any of that good stuff? 291 ending in 64 Bravo. So there's the pulling down of the Bazaar Loader aspect. Oh, now that I've got a sample of this, I almost just kind of want to see is to run this sucker through and see what shakes out inside of a sandbox. Although I guess I could technically go through and do that anyways. Since we're not hitting anything on the domains, let's try the hash. Really no threat detected from any of this stuff, but yet we sit there and see this stuff run through April, and we actually get stuff that shakes out from all this.
Uh, I'm going to assume... that what we've got here is this is going to be the very first section. So, I mean, we got the pulses off that. So, if we... Additional bizarre call for April. Okay. All right. I think that's good enough. So I'm going to assume that's going to be our first part. So it, it more than likely reached out to that gtmers.xyz as kind of like a, uh, a connection check. And it looks like that occurred frame number 16. So if you take a look at sessions. Yeah, I mean, that's... Oh, they're literally like directly in front of the bunker window now. Oh, there it is. Now it's picking some of the stuff up. They're just doing a nice cleaning, apparently. <laughs> oh, it's all right, little lot. Dogs frightened. It's the first time they've ever sat there and shot directly down into the wheel or the window well. Anyways, so it looks like this started off right off the bat, and now I entirely could be wrong and could be basically, or basically just screwing myself on this one. But given the fact that we have this stuff firing off the way that we do. I am going to mark down that it looks. Well, it's actually what looks like this came from uh, March 29th, of all things. Huh. Okay, so 10 29, or 3 29, 2021, 22 15. 31 UTC in the event that we actually have to get that deep into this. Which I don't know if we'll actually have to. Oh, crap. Alright. Home internet went out. Uh, so running through a hotspot as I record this, just making sure that everything's actually coming back up. Um, so effectively, this is looking at the session data. So I'm going to assume that basically the communication check for that gtmers.xyz uh, basically is just a health check of the infection. Okay, what kind of communications do we have? And then it basically moves on to the next XYZ domain to go through and better facilitate any of this stuff. Let me just kill the... Uh... Connection. And of course... Oh, I want you to connect to a different wireless network. I know, not what you guys are sitting there, want to sit there and actually see from all this stuff, but unfortunately, I am just dealing with this stuff as it comes up. Just glad that the hotspots uh, give us a set amount of uh, bandwidth to use as I go through this stuff. So I'm just, uh, I, I, I think that's effectively where we're just going to leave off in regards to this. Because, I mean, the first set of comms are these GTMERS.XYZ. And given the fact that we have indicators from Alien Vault for Bizarre Loader. And the fact that it's indicators inside of different pulses that have come out specifically centered around Bizarre Loader. Um, that effectively I think we're just going to call the time of infection at 
March 29th at 22.15. No idea if we're right, but... So I'm going to go ahead and grab this. I'm going to dump it into here, even though I'm not going to bother to save it. But this is going to be basically just calling out what I am expecting to see as, of all things, the answers. So this is what I'm expecting to go through and see. Okay, so apparently I need to modify it on the actual, the window size. All right, so the answers that I'm going for, at least as it, in regards to any of this stuff here. So we'll go ahead and move this up to the upper right. And, okay, let's see how we did. So it looks like Alex Rodriguez Vargas received the Raspberry Pi 4 kit for April. Good. It looks like they are calling out how all that stuff broke down. All right, so IP address in question. 192.168.5.125. Correct. Laptop dash X-ray 9, November, Alpha, Quebec 2, Echo Uniform, correct, Wilmer.Coffin, correct, okay, so I, okay, well, then you're given a wide variety as to how you want to do it. You could do it at 2218. So, okay, we were on the right track then for 2215 for the GTMERS.XYZ. Or the infection could be considered as late as 2222. So when the spreadsheet macro kicked off. As for the families, Bizarre Loader, Cobalt Strike, Anchor. So we saw Anchor from the files that were dumped in C Windows Temp ADF. Uh, Bizarre Loader f uh, from basically a lot of the files was detected that, um, although most of the VT results were TrickBot. And then Cobalt Strike, we did have a few of those that actually came back with that, although I think analyze still made sense or said that they were bizarre loader okay yeah the admin to the ret rt3 rt3 dot exe and we found that same hash that denotes that So when do we get to the point for 2218? Is that the whole aspect of, is that the time frame? Yeah, okay, I think that is. That's the time frame we start seeing communication out to that VESO2.XYZ. Well, at least they took into consideration as to going through and seeing all that stuff, this, this traffic here. That occurs at 2218. Cobalt strike activity, the DLL, which I believe was, is what we ended up seeing in the, um, well, the DLL that they do indeed mention. Question is, uh, no, not that one. This one. Although generic malware, but if I remember correctly, this is the one that 
detected it as interpreter depending on the engine or also made mention of cobalt strike so microsoft sophos and i guess i'd have to do research as to whether or not if that would be shelma for kaspersky and a few of the other engines it looks like that's how they pick it up fortinet shelma Interpreter, F secure. I thought there was another yeah, Icarus, Perturpreter. McAfee, Cobalt Strike. Uh, both McAfee's pick it up as Cobalt Strike. So okay, yeah. And basically the general breakdown from there. Oh, I just missed the the onedrive.live.com. And the anchor. Oh, so if we take a look then inside of network miner underneath the DNS aspect, some of these are probably just going to be Frickin' terrible. Yeah, it is, in fact. Here, let me take this stuff out from here. Let me put Network Miner back up. So, DNS, this is... Moving down into 2314. So we see the client is the infected workstation. Domain controller is the server. And then the DNS queries we ended up seeing are some pretty funky looking things here. Slookbanohose.com as the root, but then a bunch of just subdomains yeah a lot of this crap as we dig through here so I guess if we actually had to reach or go down that far down the uh, the rabbit hole but then again now I have a better understanding as to what the heck anchor does thanks to this because I can't say that I've ever come across oh and here's the check for uh, The IP address. It's also mentioned inside the uh, the breakdown for all this stuff. So get that out of the way. Uh, what? Oh, they're talking about the, the scheduled task section there, but they're saying this will run a dash S, but yet even in their own screenshot it shows a, a dash U, which is what, when I opened it up and set an notepad, showed the same exact thing. Oh, does this one have the... Uh, yeah, right here. <sighs> but yet, that didn't make it into the uh, text file at the root of the zip that contained the pulled-off artifacts. Eh, oh well, just something that was just overlooked. Oh, they've also got another case that you can go back and take a look at. Bizarre drops the anchor. Mm, 
Oh, I'll, uh, I'll put... Good lord. Sorry. <laughs> so the portion I was make referencing to, um, without realizing that, again, the screen was not quite showing everything. It's right here. So they've got the, their screenshot. And I just realized that it's not capturing the mouth. My uh, mouth. The mouse. So, but middle of that screenshot shows the same exact thing that we were looking at inside a notepad for that XLM, XML file. So basically calling anchor underscore x64 with the arguments of dash u. Although this here, they are claiming that supposedly it does a dash s. So I don't know... I don't know. <laughs> oh, if I had a time machine, I'd have to go back and actually infect to see as to whether or not how this stuff would pull through. Okay, uh, so that is, I think, the last aspect I have for Internet Storm Center challenges for 2021. Um, I'll have to go through, and I think I have to get a bunch of IR exercises done for Let's Defend. So more than likely, I mean, this is middle of November as I'm putting this stuff together and doing the recordings. This stuff might not get scheduled to go out until... Uh, December, but at least this way I've got like a little stockpile of videos to go through because I'm going to be out of the loop for a bit. But, all right, so I'll get all this stuff put together, put it in the notes, or put the notes in the uh, video description as per the normal procedure. And if you guys have some time and you want to sit there and see if you can find everything and dissect all this stuff in less than well, I think we're right now about 53 minutes is time of recording although the amount of time I put in to go through and analyze every artifact that they gave us uh, probably puts this closer to two three hours dumping the stuff in the uh, wonderful portions of being able to pause screen recording but with all that stuff done this is as far as I know the last ISC challenge for 2021. Ergo, the last video on this until we maybe see something put out in December, or I guess pick up or pick back up next time they start in 2022. Or I guess I could take a look and see as to whether or not if they've done any of these in 2020. Um, just go from there. But all right. Uh, with all that being said, I will see everyone in the next video.